just all introduce myself. Sure. So. Hi everyone. My name is Allison Campbell. I am a newer teammate to the Estrella team. Um, I started in April and I am very excited to be discussing this topic with all of you. So thank you for joining us. Um, I'm actually a mom to triplet girls. They're nine years old. And um, this is very interesting to me because one of my triplets is actually neurodiverse. Um, recently um, found out that she has an ADHD diagnosis. And I've always known that there was something a little bit different, especially having two typical peers that are the same age that she lives with. Um, so when we had the opportunity to present this, I was ready to go because I feel like this is very fresh in my mind. And granted, it's a very good learning experience for me knowing that I will have three 17 or 18 year olds here in nine years. But thank you for being here. I'm really excited to have Travis and Leanne here as well. Um, I'll let Amber introduce herself and then we'll get started. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Amber Gilsdorf, also an Estrella team member. This is my starting my sixth year with Estrella. And like Allison, this topic is um, near and dear to my heart because I have not triplets, one, um, one kiddo, and he has a slew of neurodiversities. He is a person with, um, on the autism spectrum and also has ADHD. And so it's very much we've, he's in third grade and we have spent a lot of time communicating with the school because even though he loves learning and learns at an incredibly fast rate, he learns differently. And so communicating his needs and helping him learn to advocate for what he needs has already been um, the equivalent, I would say, to climbing a mountain, um, but the mountain of parenting. So a near and dear topic. And just for a quick overview, we're going to make sure that um, we cover some common language definitions. So you can see our agenda here. So we want to make sure we have common language before we turn it over to Travis and Leanne to talk through what their programs uh, offer so that you understand some of the terminology that they're throwing in. And then we'll have a little time at the end for Q&A. And we try to keep these small, short, succinct. So we're going to try and keep it to under 30 minutes for you. Let's go. Woohoo! All right, so three distinctions when we talk about learning differences, and they are not all classifiably learning disabilities. So you can see here, we have these three areas. I'm not gonna read you the definitions because likely if you're attending this webinar, you probably know how these are defined, but paraphrasing and generally speaking, a learning disability is um, something that affects a person's ability to maybe process, produce information, speak, listen, read, write, all of that. It's affecting their actual academic um, areas. Whereas neurodiversity, which you could largely say is all three of these, but the brain works different and might be different in the way they prefer things socially, the way they communicate, the way they perceive the world around them. Uh, my son has said many times that he thinks he experiences the world brighter and louder than other people. Never been in his brain, so I can't say that that's true, but he seems to think so. And therefore, his brain works differently. And then executive functioning. These are the skills that help people take motivation, take action, initiate, follow through, plan what steps they need to take to break down um, a project. And if you've lived with anyone or taught anyone with executive functioning challenges, when something unexpected happens that distracts from the task at hand, it's really hard to get attention back onto the task. So those are your quick overviews of what we mean when we talk about learning differences for the purposes of this presentation. So we'll talk a little bit about learning disabilities. Um, like Amber had mentioned, there are several types of learning disabilities, um, common ones being dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, auditory processing disorder, language processing disorder, nonverbal learning disabilities, virtual perce perceptual, virtual motor deficit, and ADHD. Um, and formally, ADHD is not a learning disability, but um, sometimes we find that it, it's very comorbid to a lot of these things. So um, you can find it alongside of anxiety, like 
um, Amber had mentioned about her son with autism. So um, it's easy. It's kind of like a blanket term. People are like, well, I have ADHD and they're meaning that because they can't focus or because they're too hyper or because their executive functioning skills are poor. So um, making sure that you actually have a formal ADHD diagnosis before you just say that I have ADHD, um, I think is very um, appropriate to, to know exactly what you're talking about when you are referencing ADHD. And there's actually two types of ADHD. So um, we know that one all too well in our household as well. Um, also neurodiversity, like autumn, or like Amber had mentioned, autism, um, autism spectrum disorder. Um, again, that is very, very vast and very broad. Um, so it could be anywhere from Asperger's, meaning more like social awkwardness or an, an inability to pick up social cues to um, the other end where someone is nonverbal, um, has difficulty communicating in any capacity. So again, it could be something that is very masked and you don't even notice it, something that's very blatant and obvious. Again, we talked a little bit about ADHD um, and this is so common. We see this so commonly in, especially our younger population um, for whatever reason. So, you know, inability to controlling their attention, a lot of impulsive behaviors, we deal with that quite a bit, um, or just like the fidgety, they're picking at skin, they're twirling hair, um, they're rocking in their chair, they're biting a pencil. A lot of like the sensory input is needed, you know, maybe with ADHD to kind of like get out that that energy that they're bottling up. And then 2E, I don't have as much um, frame of reference for this, but I thought this was very interesting. So um, gifted children, so perhaps someone who's almost like a savant, just super, super smart, maybe very, um, you know, in tune with one particular interest, you know, they're very hyper-focused on something, um, but maybe extremely, again, extremely gifted, but then also have some of these other you know, maybe autism type um, quirks or, you know, they can, they have kind of like both things going on. Maybe they have an ADHD autism diagnosis alongside just being very, very smart. You want to talk about our little guy? Isn't he cute? <laughs> Wait. Um, so go ahead. did you want to take that one? No, you could take him. He's so cute though. I was so proud of this little guy that I found. I was like, this is like, so this, in my previous role as a school counselor, I was a school counselor for nine years and I sat in on so many different 504 and IEP meetings where executive functioning was talked about, but this is probably the best, in my opinion, way I've seen it broken out because just because someone has executive functioning challenges doesn't mean every single one of these is an issue that is difficult for management. Rather, it can be some of these, it can be all of them. Um, and often this can be a byproduct of ADHD or autism spectrum or a host or a myriad of any other things. Even anxiety can, even though it's not classified as, you know, a learning difference can impact learning and can impact executive functioning. Same with depression. So these different areas um, are important to keep in mind that can very much when we start to extrapolate to college where a student for the first time is possibly managing themselves. Um, these can be the things that maybe present, um, these are the hidden things in many ways that students really need to be successful in that transition and throughout college. So with that, our interlude, we are going to toss it to Travis and have you introduce yourself. We want to hear about what Bowling Green has to offer. And you'll see our big question at the end for anyone listening or to the recording or here tonight, we want to know what's the most important takeaway for parents and students to know about learning differences in college. So you can think on that. Tell us about you, Travis. Tell us about Fly. Yeah, well, I'd first off like to thank Allison and Amber for the quick introduction, the summary there. They really do describe the population very well that the Fly program is working with and that many um, programs like Fly throughout the nation that are designed to do this kind of work are, are, are how they're working to support students. So my name is Travis Brown. I'm the director of the FLY program. And then I also will work with students in a learning specialist role. And I'll talk a little more about our learning specialist here in a moment. 
So FLY is an academic support program. So the idea behind it is that there are lots of bright and talented high school students, and they're going to transition to a university setting, and it's very much a sink or swim mentality. So most colleges, universities are going to have an accessibility services office that's going to grant an accommodation to the student. Um, typically, it's a one-page letter. You'll see things like extended test time, preferential seating, maybe a designated note taker, but then students are on their own to get the supports that they need. So that's where FLY comes into place. So the charm, the heart of the FLY program that we really value is that students get a weekly one-on-one -on -one meeting with a learning specialist. So the learning specialist or the professional educators they have the wealth of knowledge, the experience, they're the national experts on helping students with learning differences in a university setting. So what we take a lot of pride in is that students meet with the same learning specialist every single week for one hour. So every student in our program is definitely a unique individual, a lot of very focused intentional supports for that person. But if I was generalizing our population, most students in the FLY program have ADHD, or they have a specific learning disability. So when they're having their one-on-one -on -one meetings, the executive functioning challenges that Amber mentioned is very real. Time management, prioritization of tasks. They're taking 15 credit hours, they're working jobs, they wanna have a social life, they have papers, exams, discussion posts, a lot's happening. So we're gonna work with them through a weekly pro plan on how to manage that. We also are going to look at issues of self-advocacy. A lot of students are in great high schools. They're receiving a lot of good support from educators. They have parents that are strong advocates and going to a university is an adjustment. So how do you navigate the greater campus community? Advising, financial aid, getting your tickets to the sporting event, trying to join a sorority, getting to your organizations and clubs. We'll work with students on that. And then the learning differences do come into play. You know, how do you take notes if you're in a lecture hall with 300 people and you have ADHD? We're going to talk about that with the student. FLY also has some other built-in services. So guaranteed one-on-one -on -one tutoring for all math and stats courses, one-on-one -on -one tutoring for all writing supports needs for any university class at BGSU. And then think of the like the general electives that students have to take in university during their first and second years, the sciences, the maths, the, the humanities types courses. We'll provide all one-on-one -on -one support for that as well. We're actually in the process of hiring a professional math tutor exclusive to students in the FLY program as well. We do study halls throughout the week that students like to come and hang out with us so they can kind of have an accountability coach and feel a little of camaraderie, get some help from their learning specialist. We do drop-in hours for students to see us beyond their one-hour appointments. And we do a lot of social events as well. We just finished a, a pumpkin carving last night, which was a lot of fun, other than having to clean up like these giant pumpkins that we had ordered. <laughs> so our FLY program, again, the support, the, the magic, what really effectively works for a student is that one-on-one -on -one relationship, that connection with the learning specialist. So the fees for our program, and you'll find that most programs doing this kind of work have fees associated with it. It's $5,000 for an academic year. So it's broken down by semester. So $2,500 per semester. Students, families, however they're funding their education can apply it to the bottom line of the bill at BGSU. So financial aid covers it. Fees aren't expected up front in one lump sum payment or anything like that. So how do our students uh, uh, find out about FLY and apply to it? I'm going to send Amber and Allison a link to our webpage and a little video that we have on YouTube, and I'll allow them to send that out to anybody that they're interested in sharing that with. Our application is right there on our webpage. So after Labor Day, we open up applications for students that are interested for the subsequent fall. So right now, we've already had about 30 people apply to be in the FLY program for the fall of 2024. We're in the process of conducting interviews. Once we finish that, we offer a spot to them. They're accepted. They're ready to be in um, the FLY program for fall 2024. Our application window ends May 1st. So that's an important date to make note of if you're looking right now for fall 2024. Are we answering the big takeaway question now? <laughs> All right, so I'll save the, the boring historical lecture, but I'm, I hold a belief that 
colleges and universities still operate in an academic mind frame, an academic business that was very much created in like the 1890s and really rose in the early 1900s. But yet, students with learning differences who really weren't accounted for in that time period now have to go to a college, a university, and jump into a class with a professor who a professor who is like an academic know-it-all in their field and survive. So I think the most important takeaway is that students need to know the supports that colleges and universities are offering and then utilize those supports as well. That goes for the FLY program, that goes for the PLUS program that we're about to hear, and all the great work that um, ac uh, educators like us are doing at colleges and universities. Know your supports, know how the colleges are doing that, take advantage of it. Anything else I can go over, Amber, Allison? That was great. Thank you so much. We yeah. actually had the pleasure of going to Bowling Green a few weeks ago and meet with the FLY team, and they are excellent. I mean, just to hear their testimonies of the types of services that they're providing and the impact that they're having with these students. Um, it was just really incredible. So thank you for the work that you're doing and um, for sharing it with us. We really, really appreciate it. All right, now I am going to introduce, here we go, Leanne DeAndreth Elkins, and she's the Executive Director of Disability Services at Muskingum University. And she's going to speak to us about their PLUS program. Um, so just like Travis Leanne, if you could just tell us a little bit about it, tell us the setup, um, what specific supports these students will get. Um, again, we know it's a fee-based program, so just explaining that for us how students can apply and a little bit about the timeline. And then we'll have you finish with the final question as well. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Leanne. All right, great, thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here and share with you a little bit about the PLUS program and provide advice to uh, future college students. Um, I am the Executive Director of Disability Resource Services, which includes the PLUS program and our ADA program that provides accommodations for students, any student with a permanent or temp temporary disability on our campus. I also am an, a faculty member in the education department, so I teach future teachers how to work with students with learning differences. Um, so I, I am very passionate about helping students with learning differences succeed in college um, and um, helping them find the right fit for them. So a little bit about the PLUS program. We, the PLUS program has been in existence on Muskingum University's campus for 40 years and really has um, to helped develop the, the campus environment that we have. So we have about 1,300 students on campus but we have a very small student faculty ratio. Um, so if a student is looking for a small environment um, where faculty are gonna know them, they're gonna be taught by faculty, not graduate students, this is a good place to be. Our program collaborates a lot with faculty. So if students have questions or concerns about the course, our, our learning consultants are reaching out to the faculty members. So we have a staff of professional learning consultants that work one-on-one -on -one with students with learning differences. And we define learning differences very generally. Yes, ADHD, um, all of the learning disabilities that you had on your earlier slide, also uh, autism spectrum disorders, but we also consider any uh, diagnosis that impacts students' ability to learn. That could be a depression, anxiety. We've even had students with some physical disabilities that have um, worked with our program because we're all about helping students learn to be successful in the college environment. Like Travis said, that has to do with learning to navigate this new environment. It also has to do with learning how to be more, much more of an independent learner um, and find, also finding the major that, that works for the students. So everything we do is individualized. And you see that in our, um, in our fee structure. So we have four different levels of services for students. Uh, they range in numbers of hours per week, um, as well as in the amount of the fee that the student pays. And it's all in, um, in, in re response to the student's individual needs. So we work with families to help them see what is gonna be best for their student based on the kinds of supports that they have received in high school. Um, so, for example, Premier is five hours a week, and the select level is three hours per week. Those are broken into 30-minute increments. 
All of those, um, all of that time is individual one-on-one -on -one support from a learning consultant. They are regularly scheduled in between classes, in between athletic practices. Um, so students have a set regular schedule for their, um, their tutoring. Um, transitions is an hour and a half a week, and those are for students that are either upperclassmen that don't need as much academic support, but they might be for an incoming first year student that doesn't need the academic support, they need more of the executive functioning support. And then our fourth level of service is called connections, and that's designed for the student who needs support with Exact communication skills, social skills, support, connecting with their peers on campus, working on group projects and those kinds of things. The connections level of support also includes a peer mentor. So we know that some students need both academic and connection support. And so they can um, bundle the select support and the connection support um, for a, a, up to six hours of support, which includes a peer mentor. So we really do try to design our services to specifically meet the needs of individual students. Students might have more than one learning consultant that they're working with, depending on their class schedule, because we find that people who tutor history and English are different brained than people who tutor math and science. Um, and, but if a student does have two learning consultants, one of them is going to be considered their primary learning consultant, and that's their go-to person who is going to oversee their whole academic experience, not just tutor-specific subjects. We do work with first-year students through seniors. It really, again, depends on the needs of the student. So as far as our fees, again, they're, they're, um, they range from $4,000 a semester for the premier to uh, $1,300 a semester for the transitions level of support. Um, and that, that information is on our website. Those fees are added onto the student's university bill so that if they are receiving scholarships and grants, they um, can um, apply those to, to the university fee. We are also working closely with OOD, the Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, in order to help students connect um, with that voc vocational rehabilitation agency in the state of Ohio to get connected for um, some uh, financial support as well as support for employment after college. So as far as our application process, the first step is to apply to Muskingum University. Um, once student, when students do apply, there is a spot on our application to indicate an interest in the PLUS program so that when students are accepted to the university, we become notified that the student um, is interested in the PLUS program and we will begin to reach out or the student's welcome to reach out to us. We'll ask that they send us their documentation, their IEP, their 504 plan, their letter from their uh, medical provider. And that gets the ball rolling with disability, with student accessibility services, as well as the PLUS program. Um, just like Travis said, we'll want to schedule an individual interview with the student because we want to share what our services are, as well as um, we want to get to know the student and what the student's individual needs are, and then explain how we can meet those needs. Um, so my, my takeaway is kind of similar to Travis's in that it's important that students reflect on what their needs are. What kinds of support have they received in high school? College is um, different in that everything is much more independent. And so the student has to seek out the support and services. At Muskingum, you can do that through, um, th through the application to the university. You can let us know that you're interested in PLUS services, or you can simply give us a call and reach out directly to us. Um, but if you decide that, um, you don't want the PLUS services right away, maybe you're gonna wait and see how your first semester goes. Again, for the next semester, you're gonna to wanna to reach out. You have to, in college, advocate for yourself because in high school, all of your teachers, counselors know what your needs are. And when you come to college, no one knows what your needs are unless you advocate and let, let folks know that you, you have um, needs for accommodations or needs for tutoring. Um, I, I would also say to think about um, as you're looking for college, what, what you're interested in, what you want to major in, what you like to do, what your strengths are. You don't have to come to college with a set uh, major or degree plan in mind. You can narrow it down if you want, but you can also come to college and experience some different classes and see what's interesting to you. 
um, because that's what college is all about, is learning about who you are, learning about how you learn, connecting with your professors, connecting with your peers, and finding the best fit for you, both in college and as you pursue your, your future career. So college is possible for students with learning differences. Uh, our programs are, are unique. Not every campus has a program like we provide on our two campuses. So seek out um, the kinds of support that you can receive on, on the campuses that you're looking for to be sure that you uh, have your needs met and find a good fit for your college experience. Oh, hopefully I hit everything. Yes, wonderful. Very, very good. Thank you so much, Leanne. We really appreciate that. And I love how you incorporate, like you said, the ADA component as well. So really encompassing all the disability opportunities, you know, to to help all the students that you can. And I know Muskingum is so much smaller compared to Bowling Green, but um, that was really interesting. I did not know that about the PLUS program, how uh, inclusive it was. So thank you so much. Um, I have one more slide. So there is some contact info for both Travis and Leanne. Um, I know like Travis said, he is going to send us the link for fly as well as how to apply. Um, Leanne, if you have anything that you want to share with us too, when we send the recording out to everybody, we can send that out as well. Um, I'm going to stop screen sharing and then that way I can see if we have any questions. While we while we wait to see if anyone has questions for our panelists, I I want to say that in I mean this is my I don't know sixteenth year fifteenth year of doing college admissions counseling in some capacity, and we are beyond like lucky to have two programs like this in Ohio. This is high like the programs that fly and plus the level of support that they offer in these types of programs are not common. Um, as Travis said, you know, most colleges were established during a time when people who learn differently weren't considered. And those types of programs have been, you know, colleges have been behind in incorporating programs like Fly and Plus into their institutions. So it's very unusual to have two amazing programs in our state. Um, and then on top of that, to have two programs represented at two very different types of schools. So if you have a student who um, thrives better in a smaller environment, Muskingum might be a great place for them, where Bowling Green is a squarely medium-sized school and a state university. And maybe your student wants that feel over a smaller school. So to have two opposing options that have such good programs for students with learning disabilities in our state is, we're just very lucky. So if you're an Ohioan, consider yourself lucky. I don't know if everybody watching this is in Ohio, but thank you both. We are very grateful. Do we have any questions? Um, we have one. It was, can you put the email contacts in the chat? So yes, I can do that for you. I'll work on that. For a second. We're at 730. Is there anything else you want to wrap up with, Amber? Any other thoughts? No. Nope. work on getting back to more. I don't. Any final thoughts, Travis or Leanne? Things we didn't touch on? I know it was a quick one. We try to keep them short by design. Um, but anything that bears repeating or that you want to share? Yeah, I think just one final thought. You know, I'm certainly honored if you're interested in BG because of Fly. I'm sure Leanne has the same sentiment about Plus. But for students that are looking for a school, make sure you you feel good about the the larger campus of the camp of, of when you're visiting. You know, you got to be at one want to be at BG. You got to want to be at Muskegon or wherever you're choosing to go to college. You know, is it is it going to be home for four years? Right. Um, and then worry about the support program as well. You, you got to have a balance between both. Yep, absolutely. All right, question um, answered. Yay. So we have the contact info in the chat. If there aren't any other questions, we're going to say a huge heartfelt thank you to our panelists. And um, we will make sure that everybody who's watching this recording, if you want the contact info you saw it on the slide before but you can check in with your consultant and we can help you out too so thank you guys so much for being here
Thank you both. This was wonderful. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Good night. Good night.